This is the blossoming chest cyst and the history behind the modern day scalpel. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dr. Jean-Pierre Galliani, a board certified dermatologist. And today we have this small chest cyst on the patient's chest. She's a young female patient and she's already numb with local anesthetic and we started making this incision um you know i wanted to talk about the history behind the tool that we need for surgery right the scalpel the knife was really the first tool ever made by humans right and we have evidence that a, a knife was used for surgical purposes dating back to 10,000 BC and throughout history, you know, the Egyptians, the Romans, the Greeks, they've all, there's good documentation that they use different types of surgical blades. And the actual scalpel as it is today, didn't come to creation till the early 1900s. And that development of the modern scalpel was mainly due to the creation of the disposable blade. And that's as a result of Mr. King Gillette's invention of the disposable double edge safety razor. So he patented this double edge safety razor back in 1904. And when he first started, he, he started producing these safety razors in 1903. And at that time, he sold maybe 50 razors and about 160 blades. By the second year, he has sold 90,000 razors and over 120,000 blades. And by 1908, they had facilities in the US, Canada, Britain, France, and Germany. And by 1915, the razor cells had exceeded over 450,000 units and they sold over 70 million blades. So that was just a, a massive um, company that was created by disposable razors. So what does these disposable razors have to do with our surgical blade? Well, before that time, surgeons were using blades that were not disposable, they were reusable, and they were attached to a handle by screws and different tools that you needed multiple things to put these blades together and not only did you have to use a second tool to put it together but the blades needed to be sharpened periodically and sometimes even throughout the procedure while the surgery was going on the blades would go dull and they would need to ha they will have somebody sharpen the blade in the operating room so it's not very convenient right so when Gillette created his disposable razors, a surgeon in Chicago, Dr. John Murphy, he developed a special handle that would, was um, used to attach these double edge safety razors or safety blades to a handle. And he patented that, I think in 1910. But the problem with those razors and those scalpels is that because of the shape of the blade, like a, like a rectangle, they were not very useful for uh, for surgery. I mean, you have to have some type of edge to it to um, be able to cut in, in different directions. And so they were not very technical, very, uh, pleasing for the surgeons. Okay. Yeah. And so around 1910, 1912, a... Um, an engineer by the name of Morgan Parker, who had nothing to do with medicine. He was just a 22 year old engineer. And I think through his uncle, he, he found out that there was this issue surgeons were having, they were trying to solve this problem. And he, he developed the first way to have a handle that would be able to hook a disposable blade without a second tool. So it was kind of like a, um, what, what essentially what we have today where the blade just snaps into place into a locking mechanism without an addition of any pins or anything else like that. It was just overlapping metal. 
And he, the, he patented this in 1915 and he created a company um, with a second person. And that became what we still use today. Basically, essentially the same tools. They refined them a little bit, uh, and I think in, 19, in the 1930s, but since the 1930s, the scalpels haven't changed very much. And so you've probably seen a lot of these, if you're watching this video, you're probably, you've probably seen a lot of surgical videos and you've heard you know, the 10 blade, the 11 blade, the 15 blade. And so why, why do they call them these numbers? What, what is, how did, where do these numbers come from? Well, it was Parker, the guy that developed these, uh, the, the, two pay, the two piece scalpel, he numbered the handles from one to nine and they're all different size handles. And he labeled his blades starting at 10 to 20, right? And the, the numbers did not really correspond to anything in, in specific to the blades. There were just different numbers assigned to different handles and different blades. But those numbers stuck and that's what, what is used today. So now there's new blades that are out there from in the 30s or even in the 60s, but they really don't mean anything, they're just arbitrary numbers that were given to different different blades but it was a parker that that assigned those numbers in the first place so in, in today in today's world really we only have about three or four handles the number three handle which is what most surgeons use which is the one that i use and um, the number four handle which handles blades are a little bit bigger and in dermatology we really use mainly three blades, right? The number 10 blade, which is a, a bigger blade that's used for, thin, for thicker skin like the back. The 15 blade, which is the most commonly used blade uh, for most surgeries. And the 11 blade, which is used to puncture uh, things like rupture cysts or abscesses. So that's the story about the surgical blade. To get you an idea, um, King Gillette, Right, created the Gillette Company, and he started with his disposable blades back in 1903 or whatever it was in the early 1900s. And in 2005, the Gillette Company was sold to Procter and Gamble for 57 billion dollars. So, you know, thanks to King Gillette, not not royalty by by birth, but definitely royalty by the sheer massive company that he created. And uh, thanks to, to his invention, we have what we know of the scalpel today. So our excision here was done um, with a 15 blade and we're just finishing up uh, our patient's stitches. These are just the deep stitches. I did not record the, the external stitches on her, but um, but yeah, these, uh, these stitches should dissolve in a couple of uh, weeks to months underneath the skin. The top stitches were removed in just 10 days. And I'll bring up the post-op or the 10-day follow-up uh, uh, picture here in just a second. And young skin is usually very tough. And, you know, it's not like older skin that moves quite easily. You can see how her skin is fighting me a little bit here. I did place four sutures on the outside, just simple interrupted. <clears throat> I don't have the video of that, but I'll have a photo of it. And then we have a 10 day suture removal picture. A little bit of redness, but that line should be invisible. So that's our video. If you like this uh, type of content, don't, uh, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. And I'll see you on the next video.